Well, hello. Hi, Larry. How, How are you? you? Are? I'm Salud Carbajal, running for re-election for county supervisor. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Come on in. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Nice this you. is my wife, Gina. Nice to see you, Gina. Nice to see you. And uh, what part of town are we in here, Sal? Uh, we are on the west side of the city of Santa Barbara, on Islay Street, to be exact. And uh, I've been here before with other Yes, you have. <laughs> Well, nice to see you. Shall we go? Yes, let's get going. Okay, here we Great. go. We'll see you shortly, Gina. Larry, this is uh, the west side uh, near my home. And the reason we're going through here is I just wanted you to get a sense of this neighborhood. It's in the city of Santa Barbara. Certainly it's within the authority of the city council, uh, not the board of supervisors in terms of its direct municipal services. But nonetheless, uh, we are working, uh, my office and the County of Santa Barbara is working with um, the City of Santa Barbara and the schools to see what we could do uh, better together by collaborating to bring more resources and services to the west side of Santa Barbara as well as the east side. Uh, these are underserved neighborhoods and collaborating, interagency collaboration I think lends itself to maximizing our resources and being able to be more effective in addressing the needs of this area. And that's what we're doing right now. Okay, where are we now, Southern? Well, Larry, now we're here in the San Roque area. It's the new part of the district since redistricting. Here's McKenzie Park. And of course, uh, the first district stems from the San Roque area, uh, all the way down to, in the city of Santa Barbara, all the way down to the city of Carpinteria. And the new part of the district, it was New Kuyama was added to it, as well as San Roque, and a little piece of the waterfront. And so this is all new, a new section and a new area that um, was included now in the first district. It really doesn't uh, mean much to people's lives other than they have a new representative, and that is, uh, now myself. So it's, I'm looking forward to representing uh, the interests, the needs uh, of the residents of San Roque as well and providing the highest level of customer service uh, when uh, people call my office. Larry here, we're in a green space that's uh, pretty much in the center of San Roque and it's um, I think uh, one of the areas in San Roque that characterizes the San Roque area. So uh, again, this is a new part of the district and I'm just uh, really excited uh, to be able to represent the individuals and the families and the households here in San Roque. Two other communities in the first district are the Riviera and Mission Canyon. Is this Mission Canyon here? This is Mission Canyon area and um, it's a high fire hazard area and many of the residents up here uh, have great concerns about their safety and fire safety and that's one of the areas that I think county government has really done everything possible to address the needs of the community is to work with the community in partnership to have a good uh, plan to address uh, fire safety in the area. We also have a community plan going on right now that addresses parking and circulation and all the various issues that are covered by a community plan. And that is uh, going to be concluded in a few months. And that is something that we've been working on for over a year now. And um, I think it's going to improve the quality of life for residents in Mission Canyon greatly. Larry, and here as we come up to Fire Station 15 at the county, um, it's the fire station that serves this entire region of Mission Canyon area. And uh, clearly it's uh, well situated to address the fire needs uh, and the response uh, to all these issues here in Mission Canyon. And I thought it's important to come by here and um, just uh, be able to point this out. And Larry, here we're in the east side part of the city of Santa Barbara that's also in my district. And of course I represent uh, the area that includes the mission and it's uh, a very iconic um, place here in Santa Barbara and my son's school is Roosevelt School and it's right over here uh, across the street and we're gonna go by there right now but uh, again this is a, a in the heart of the east side upper east side and we're gonna go to the lower part of the east side right now on Milpa Street and Larry here's a school uh, Roosevelt School that I pointed out which is the school where my son goes to school at He's, his name is Michael and he is um, 11 years old
Okay, we're recording. Where are we now? And Larry, we're on Milpa Street, and as you know, this is again in the city of Santa Barbara, the Lower East Side. And uh, again, the city provides municipal services in the incorporated area. And the county provides full services and municipal services for the unincorporated area. But even in the city uh, areas, we provide a number of services, uh, social services, health services uh, to the residents, whether you're in the incorporated or, or unincorporated area. And here we're gonna go to uh, the Eastside County Health Clinic um, to illustrate, I think, some of the services that the county does directly provide in incorporated city areas such as the city of Santa Barbara. And again, the city uh, provides its municipal services for roads and law enforcement here in the city, but uh, the county also provides uh, ample services to city residents. And here's the uh, Franklin Neighborhood uh, Center and also the Public Health Franklin Clinic. And we're gonna get off right now. And Larry here, we're in front of the uh, County Public Health Clinic here in the city of Santa Barbara, uh, Lower East Side. And the county is required to provide uh, health care uh, to all residents, incorporated and unincorporated area, and that is to residents who can't afford uh, traditional health insurance. And I'm also very proud to say that uh, Santa Barbara County was able to uh, provide insurance to most uninsured children in the county of Santa Barbara. We went from 16,000 uninsured children to just slightly under 2,000 here in the county. And that's something I'm very proud of and something I worked hard to achieve. Okay, we're on. Where are we going now? We are getting on the 101 freeway from Milpas and Milpas Street. And this is just basically an opportunity to talk about how we have a major widening project that's ensuing that's about to come to conclusion here on the Cabrillo Hot Springs uh, area. But there's two other major phases going on uh, that will come forward in the near future. And again, we're trying to bring about a, a rail, commuter rail project from Ventura all the way to Goleta and we're working on continuing the widening project with the SB CAG and the state of California Caltrans uh, from Montecito to Casitas Pass and Carpinteria. And the other phase, which is already starting, is the Casitas Pass to Muscle Shoals in Ventura County. Um, Measure A is gonna help us build uh, the widening project from Montecito all the way to Casitas Pass. It's 425 million. Measure A was able to provide a 140 million of that. And um, it, it, we are on our way. Larry, we are here now entering Montecito on San Isidro uh, Road. And here we have a path that is in keeping with the rural character of Montecito that the county was able to build, working with residents and stakeholders and school, the school of uh, Montecito Union and parents. And it was uh, a little controversial at first. People were concerned that it not looked like a sidewalk, that it looked like a rural pathway so that it could be in keeping with uh, the character of uh, Montecito and the community plan and we were able to achieve a, a very good outcome. Is that crushed granite? That is decomposed granite that was used and it's uh, really a, a, a nice looking trail as you can see. Larry, as you can see, the path turned out really great and it's uh, uh, great for pedestrians, children's safety, and uh, now we have a lot of people that are children and, and adults that are just using this pathway to make sure that uh, they can traverse this area in a very safe manner. And I'm very proud of how it turned out. The Montecito community has worked hard with the county to maintain the character of the community through its community plan and good land use policies. And I think we've achieved that um, greatly in part because of the civic engagement from the community. Go ahead. Uh, Larry here, we're entering uh, another community in the first district, Summerlin. As you can see, the big yellow house is being renovated. And here we have the parking and circulation plan that we've implemented over the years. We're in the process of concluding the downtown revitalization as it relates to the parking and circulation plan. Uh, we're in the last phase of it right now. And we're also in the process of concluding the community plan for Summerlin, which again, 
uh, has done a really good job of putting forth policies that the community themselves uh, have identified are needed for the community. And again, it's going to improve the quality of life for residents in Summerlin. And um, it's, it's been a great partnership uh, with the county uh, bringing these projects forward. The Summerlin Community Plan, which will conclude in the near future, and the Parking and Circulation Plan. Larry here, we're at Santa Claus Lane and we, are, we have a big project planned for this area with the community to provide safe beach passage for residents who, and, and area residents who visit this wonderful beach. It's one of the highest used beaches in our, in our county and it doesn't have safe passage. And we're working with uh, the state PUC to provide an at-grade crossing. The county uh, has two parcels here where we're going to be able to provide that safe passage. We're working with the area residents and the business owners to provide a better parking and circulation plan for this entire vicinity and um, give it a new aesthetic, revitalized uh, feel to it. So this is an area that we're working on um, aggressively. We're also going to have amenities like restrooms that are not existent right now but so that people could use the facilities when they come visit this beach. Currently, uh, those facilities are lacking and those are the types of things we're gonna be working on with the Santa Claus project. We are now at the Carpinteria Resource Center at Maine and I'm very proud that we have weekly office hours here in Carpinteria. And we've had it for going on eight years and it's been a great a way to be accessible and to connect with Carpentria residents. We have also brought a, a, a variety of county resources and services to the Carpentria community. In addition to our health clinic, we have a number of health and human services uh, programs here in this facility and I'm very proud of that. It's something we've achieved uh, working with the Carpentria community. Larry, we're here at the Carpentria Bluffs, which is the southernmost part of the first district. And this uh, property was acquired by the community. They came together to purchase it. And the county was a small piece in partnering with the community to make that happen as well through CREF funding. And I, again, I'm very proud to represent this community. We're also working in partnership with the community for the Franklin Trail and um, making these treasures uh, exist for future generations. And um, I think it's part of the values that I have and I think that the residents of the first district have. Being a son of a farm worker uh, also allows me to appreciate uh, the farm workers that we have in this community, as well as the significant agriculture community. Uh, we have one of the most significant cut flower ag um, sectors in the country here in, in this area, and I am very proud to be able to represent them as well. Um, as you can see, we have a diverse district and the county has been doing a lot to improve the lives and quality of life of our residents and I'm very proud to be your supervisor. I respectfully ask for your support on June 5th. Uh, you can go to my website at saludcarbajal.com. Okay, well good luck to you, Salud. Thank you, Larry. You have been watching Touring with the Candidates, sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Santa Barbara and produced by Larry Nimmer. In addition to programs like this, we sponsor forums and we also offer information online at our website www.smartvoter.org. All candidates are invited to present their information online at our website. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation. Remember, you can also vote by mail. For the League of Women Voters of Santa Barbara, I'm Irene Stone and we'll see you next time.